Welcome to another meeting of the Lorain County Commissioners, broadcast exclusively on your Lorain County Community College Education Station. The Lorain County Commissioners cordially invite you to see the meetings live and in person every Thursday morning. The meetings are located in the Lorain County Administration Building, located at 226 Middle Avenue in downtown Elyria. The meetings start at 9.30 a.m. on most weeks. Now, enjoy the meeting. Good morning. We've got a full agenda this morning, and we've got a group of children here from Amherst uh, Steel School, their government class, and their seniors. And I would like for them to introduce themselves, please. Derek Firestone, Ed Massey, Pete Sasso, Dave Moore, <laughs> <laughs> Bruno Catalano, James Owen. And they're a great group. I visited their class uh, not too long ago, and I, from this class we are going to see some politicians and some attorneys. They're great kids. They're really intelligent. And we have, we're honored here today with Mr. and Mrs. Jacoby. Mr. Jacoby, former commissioner, thanks for coming. Uh, Madam Clerk, approved the loan in the amount of $15,000 to Melissa Burnett to expand her current business, Exotic Dan Tanning and Lingerie, Elyria, Ohio, from the Lorain County Micro Enterprise Loan Program, and authorized the President to execute on behalf of the Board. This is the ninth loan approved, and the LAMP Review Loan Committee has reviewed the application and recommends approval. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Vasey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Approved loan in the amount of $20,000 to Jeffrey and Teresa Garn to expand their business, Access Wave Communications Incorporated, Wellington, Ohio, from the Lorain County Microenterprise Loan Program, authorized present to execute on behalf of the board. This is the 10th loan approved, and the LAMP Review Loan Committee has reviewed. The application recommends approval. So moved. Second. Discussion? Yeah, are they here today, or? I'd like to Mrs. Miss Long is here, and she could probably. I'd like to have a here. discussion of uh, what we have and the people if they're here to talk about it. Um, first, Melissa Burnett, um, her business uh, will be starting de December first, actually, in Elyria, across the street from Community College on Abbey Road, and she couldn't be here today because. Um, she was taking, she said, her last vacation before she starts her new business. She didn't know if she'd be able to get another vacation for a while. So she had planned this before, and she apologizes for not being able to be here. But we do have Jeffrey Garn, who um, is here from Access Wave Communications, which is a very interesting new company that does wireless um, internet to provide internet um, to the southern part of the county. And if he would like to have something to say. Okay. Again, I'm Jeff Garn. And, uh, I'm in Wellington, Ohio. I own Jagger Computing, uh, which is downtown. Um, we're putting up a wireless internet uh, for the uh, people out there. Right now, our only broadband solution is cable modems. And uh, right now, that's really not working out. And they've been having problems for the last four to five months. Um, sure, they're going to be my competitor. But the, uh, the response just by word of mouth to my, uh, this new venture has uh, been very positive. I've already uh, signed up six people, got them up and running. Um, I've got my T1 in place, I've got my tower up, and uh, everybody's very satisfied with the service. And uh, how, do they, how do they get a hold of you? They... Jagger, through Jagger Computing, which is my downtown storefront. Downtown. Yeah. I'm trying to give you a plug, you're on yeah. TV, so. Do you have a phone number? Yeah, a phone number. And it's 440-647-5552. Uh, okay. Congratulations. Thanks. Good luck. Ms. Vasey. Aye, Mr. Moore. Aye. Human services bills? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Vasey? Aye. Investments? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Moore? Ms. Aye. Ms. Vasey? How would you like to vote? Do you want to invest the money? Sure. Aye. Appropriations? 
So move. Second. Discussion? Yes. There was a resolution in there that was, uh, well, we passed a resolution in September to switch the internet service to first communication. And on page four of the appropriations, there's a bill for $5,100 for the old company from September to December. And I think I need an ex explanation on that. I was uh, getting out the uh, paperwork, sorry. Uh, first, the, uh, my understanding is that there's, there's an issue with the uh, first communication uh, service and contract. So I don't believe that that relationship has been uh, completely consummated uh, at this time. Uh, secondly, there was always going to be an overlap period between First Communications and our current hosting company. Uh, we, we never did cancel the contract with them because we were going to be transitioning. It was going to take a few months to transition. Uh, so this is, that would have been this transition period. I'm not completely sure where we are uh, with First Communications. It is my understanding from the new IT director uh, that he has some reservations about uh, moving forward with, with First Communications. I, I have not uh, had an extensive dialogue uh, with him to date, uh, but I do know that he is, he has uh, uh, asked that, uh, uh, he has asked whether we legally have to move forward with that first communication contract or can he come back to this board and make an alternative recommendation. Uh, I'm not sure when that's going to be forthcoming, hopefully very soon. He's not here this morning? Uh, I wasn't aware that this was going to be an issue until a couple minutes before the board meeting. So uh, he is not available. How long will it take to have an opinion from I think has Jerry been informed of this yet or no? The uh, I have a copy of a correspondence that he wrote to uh, Mr. Innes uh, I got yesterday uh, questioning uh, whether we were legally bound to a commitment to First Communications. Well, if we have a resolution, I think that's legal. <clears throat> well, I'm not saying it's not legal. Uh, if, if, in fact, uh, documentation or, uh, or, or evidence in a demonstrable way is presented uh, to conclude that it's not in the county's best interest to move forward to first communication. I would hope that we'd be able to hold on that and, and go forward with what would be most advantageous for the county. I don't have a position on this one way or another. I'm just getting, I'm gaining information from the people. How, how much time do you need to, before we have to pay this again? How much time do you need? Can we find out in a week, two weeks? Well, certainly. I, I believe the issue could be Once resolved next, in a week or two. Are we have a meeting next December week? December 6th. December 6th? I think we can find out by December 6th? <coughs> Certainly. Is that because we're already we've already paid this. This is for what all of December? Do you know? Is this? I'm assuming it would be for all of December. It's, okay, it's not so unusual. December first to December from September to December first. Okay. It is. That's right. Because we had this discussion, I think, in uh, August. <laughs> I remember that. Um, so we're okay. So if we can find out by December sixth, I think what the status, whether or not we can legally go forward or not, whether or not. Uh, we're going to actually, well, you know, I mean, just and maybe get the IT director. Here yeah, and I'd like to so. know what the problem is with the contract. All right. So. Well, I don't think it's a problem with the contract. I, I believe that uh, in, in, in some short discussions, uh, uh, Mr. Smith has, has uh, alluded to the fact that he doesn't believe that moving forward with first communication is going to be the most cost-effective solution. I have a problem with that, and I'd like to discuss that with you. I mm -hmm. think that we should have him available at the next commission meeting, and uh, he should speak to the issue. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So since um, well, we're going to have to pay it since they already use the service. Yeah, that's true. Okay. okay. Who moved? Did we move on this already? Or? Miss Basie. Yeah, Mr. I moved. I second it. Okay. Or I. <laughs> Transfers. So move. Second. Discussion. Miss Basie. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Advances. So move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Moore. Aye. Ms. Basic. Aye. Requisitions. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Basic. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Travel expenses. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Moore. Aye. Ms. Basic. Aye. Bills. So moved. Discussion. Okay. Ms. Basic. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. 
Authorize various personnel actions as indicated on the summary for employees within the jurisdiction of Lorraine County Commissioners. So moved. Oh, man, that's what I was supposed to do. Where's the, where's the personnel summary? The, uh, at, at, at this juncture, uh, before you vote, uh, well, I was going to wait for discussion, but I'd, I'd like to uh, request an executive session for the express purpose of discussing uh, new hires uh, and a uh, pending, uh, uh, well, actually, we just for the new hires. Uh, as a lot I of saw this two yeah. personnel summary sheets, and there's only one here. Yeah, there was another one floating around. That was from oh. last week. We didn't have a meeting last week. Two weeks ago, I'm sorry. Two weeks ago. We didn't vote on it? It was voted on, but it came over late. It was, it was in the packet, but the actual page was not there. Let's, let's clarify this in our executive session. Okay, thanks. So, okay, so I'll make, I'll make a second. Now we're in discussion. We're going to go to executive session. Yes, so, okay. Authorize the reappointments of James Moraldo. Term is effective January 20, 2002, expiring January 19, 2006. And Richard Deesh, term is effective January 22, 2002, expiring January 21, 2006, as members on the Lorraine County Community College Board of Trustees. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Facey. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Authorize appointments of Roy R. Cotran and Brian Kopich as members of the Lorraine County Local Emergency Planning Commission, effective November 29, 2001. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Facey. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Authorize a refund to be issued to Insignia Title Agency in the amount of $48 for an incorrect conveyance fee. The incorrect transfer purchase price was $105,000 when it should have been $93,000. And the auditor's office has reviewed and recommends approval. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Moore. Aye. Ms. Facey. Aye. Approve and enter into a real estate agreement on behalf of Lorraine County Engineer and ODOT and issue a warrant in the amount of $131,180 to be paid from the engineer's bond fund to ODOT. ODOT will perform the right-of-way acquisition and repair slipping embankment along State Route 611 adjacent to Black River on the 21st Street Bridge. NOACA will provide 80% of the construction costs and preliminary approval from OPWC will pay the remaining 20% of the construction costs and right-of-way costs. The plans were paid for by ODOT and the project is estimated at $1.3 million. ODOT will perform the right-of-way acquisition for an estimate cost of $118,700 for the land and $13,010 for services authorized president to execute on behalf of the board. So moved. A second. Discussion. Ms. Facey. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Authorize the allocation of $90,000 from the CSX negotiated agreement to Ean Township. This money will be used to update water lines with the addition of 10 fire hydrants that will be placed on both sides of the railroad tracks to ensure the safety of the residents and to expedite the water shuttle process when fighting fires in non hydrant areas. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Facey. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. <clears throat> Authorize various personnel with the Lorraine County Department of Job and Family Services to utilize their BP gasoline credit card privileges for the purchase of gas, oil, and emergency motor vehicle repair for county-owned or leased vehicles not to exceed $3,000 for the year 2002. Authorize Mary Lugolsky, director, to utilize the Visa bank card for purchases of food, lodging, and emergency motor vehicle repair for county-owned or leased vehicles not to exceed $1,500, and the AT&T card for long-distance calls not to exceed $50 for the year 2002. So moved. <coughs> no second? No second. On January 8th, I said uh, I asked the uh, agency to change their gas card to get away from, oh, unfriendly corporate... Uh, all right, what was it? Uh, unfriendly to communities such as BP that's left Cleveland and left a lot of vacant stations. That was a year ago. So every other agency seems to be changing their cards to maybe American, Marathon, local agencies. How come uh, BP is coming back? It's an interesting question. I had the same question. Uh, that was a year I'm, ago. I'm ple well, I'm pleased to tell you that we, we have moved away from BP with all, all other agencies in the county. I, I did have dialogue uh, uh, with Ms. Golsky on, on the BP uh, caught out uh, at Job and Family Services, and it was my indication that they lost their shell card because of untimely payment of bills. Is somebody here from 
Mary Lou. Mary Lou. Lewis. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we had uh, requested the uh, BP card prior to um, you taking office, Commissioner Moore. So All right, and that's why you, I think you guys had it for the whole year. So Yeah, so we had yeah. it. Uh, and then we have worked on getting uh, Shell and Sunoco uh, credit cards, mm -hmm. but until we can get those approved, uh, we would request that we continue to use BP. Part of our problem is most of our tra most of our out of county travel is to Columbus and we can't always guarantee what gas station will be on the route or we we also send people to Hudson Ohio frequently or um, Akron so some of the problem is being I mean before you you requested that that agencies get a she um, speedway and that's fine for in county but that's not always good outside the county. So that was just one of several. That was one of several ideas. Just cool. someone that's more corporate uh, or community friendly to our. Uh, is kind of what the corporations I was looking to do business with. Okay. We yeah. did. We have applied for Shell and Sunoco. Those have not been approved as of today. Okay. So, um, we'll have to uh, terminate all out of county travel if if. Uh, well, the if sheriff has to go pick up clients and two hours south and two hours back. I mean, unless you're driving around in a, uh, I mean, the shell and there's other cars. It's been 11 months. I don't see how it took 11 months to, because we had this discussion in January in executive well, session. I mean, I remember having this discussion. So. Mary Lou, would six months be sufficient? This is for the entire year of 2002. Yeah, even we three were, months would be fine. I, okay. I would prefer 90 days. Or that would be fine. Sure. Okay. Okay. That'd be fine. I'll amend. Thank you. And the rest of no, Thank you, Mayla. Mm -hmm. We still need a second. Need a second. <laughs> Further discussion? Ms. Basie? Aye. Mr. Mayor. Aye. Amend resolution number 01557, adopted June 7, 2001, with Lorraine County Department of Job and Family Services for various purchase of service contracts using Title 20 funds. Amendment is to increase the value of contract award to Heritage Home Health Agency by 60000 and delete the contract awarded to Handle with Care Agency in the amount of 60000 The total value of the contract with Heritage will be 120000 So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Approve and enter into an addendum between the State of Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction and Lorain County. This modification is community-based correctional facility subsidy grant agreement in the amount of $1,547,550 executed by both parties on June 29, 2001. The grant award shall be increased by $88,111 from $1,000. Million five hundred forty-seven five hundred fifty dollars to one million six hundred thirty-five thousand six hundred sixty-one dollars, and total expenditures for fiscal year two thousand and two shall not exceed one million six hundred thirty-five thousand six hundred sixty-one dollars. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Basie. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Authorized payment of Lorraine County General Fund mandated share as outlined payable to Lorraine County Department of Job and Family Services in compliance with ORC five one zero one sixteen. Payment is for January 1st, 2002 through June 30th, 2002 in the amount of $100,108 and will be budgeted in the county's general fund for year 2002. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Approve and enter into following daycare center contracts for Lorain County Department of Job and Family Services effective January 1st, 2002 through December 31st, 2002. The maximum amount reimbursed for children enrolled in child care is based on the state reimbursement ceilings, which are set for the age of the child and the amount of the time the child attends the center. <coughs> Authorize Mary Lou Golski, director, to execute on contracts on behalf of the board as needed with the prosecutor's approval as to form as follows. There are 52 of them. I have 51 on my list. I'm sorry, 51 of them. If you'd like, to, I can read them all. No, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's great. So move. Second. Discussion. I saved us a half hour. Ms. Basie. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Authorize the Lane County Budget Department to take necessary action for the creation of a new special revenue fund, number 212, entitled FUD Plan. This fund will be utilized in accounting for Federal Emergency Management Agency grant funding 
for hydraulic and hydraulic analysis and floodplain mapping studies in Lorain County, and the grant receipts will be in the amount of $100,000 and require no local matching. So moved. A second. Discussion? Ms. Vasey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Accept and approve the Nord Foundation grant in the amount of $27,286 for Lorain County Children and Families Council for the continued support of the Parent Leadership Training Institute and authorize the President to execute on behalf of the Board. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Vasey? Aye. Authorize the closing of Lorain County Department of Job and Family Services Building, 42485, North Ridge Road, Elyria, Ohio, on December 24, 2001, in observance of the Christmas Eve day in order to receive state comp compensation. <coughs> I think all, all departments, isn't this? Uh, commissioners, when we passed a resolution uh, dealing with this issue approximately two, two weeks ago, um, uh, I uh, should have included a specific reference to uh, Department of Job and Family Services because the state requires them to be specifically <coughs> named uh, to uh, be able to gain uh, funding for compensation on that day should be closed. Uh, so we, we need to We also should add to that resolution that uh, what we added to the last one, which is that it should be, in the future, it should be in accordance with the policies and procedures uh, that we use uh, concerning holidays. And that's what we added to the last resolution. Okay. Isn't Mr. Fo? You you want to speak to that issue? I, I mean, you had some discussion on it the last time it came up. No, I agree with what you said. I mean, that's on the money. Are we consistent? That's okay. Exactly. So, uh, how do we amend the resolution? Then? Just to amend it. To include. Right, and at the 24th, will will be uh, uh, the 24th of December will uh, will be handled uh, as a holiday in accordance with the current. Uh, Practices and procedures uh, of the Warren County Board of Commissioners. Okay. And this is also on the union contracts? Yes, it is, Commissioner. Okay, thank you. Someone? Oh, second. Any further discussion? Ms. Basie. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. <coughs> Issue notice to proceed letters to Williams Brothers Builders Incorporated, Elyria, Ohio, T.H. Martin Duck Systems Incorporated, Cleveland, Ohio, South Shore Electric Incorporated, Elyria, Ohio, and Integrator.com, Noblesville, Indiana, for Lorain County Correctional Facility System and Equipment Alterations, effective December 3, 2001. These contracts were awarded by resolution number 011001, adopted November 1, 2001. Someone? Second. Discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Accept and approve the Rain County Domestic Relations Court Juvenile Division funding, $4,140 local cash match from the Rain County General Fund to meet the Office of Criminal Justice Services funding, $37,260 for a project total of $41,400. This funding will provide the court the opportunity to fund professional services used by Stepping Stone Residential Treatment Center for anger management for juveniles and their parents drug and alcohol counseling, site activities through Boy Scouts America, and psychiatric evaluations. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Authorize a purchase order in the amount of $24,766 from the Engineering Bond Fund to KNS Associates, Leary, Ohio, to perform soil bores, preliminary survey work, and make recommendations on the structure replacement type and stabilizing the north approach for the Vermont Street Bridge number 000486. Ohio Public Works awarded the replacement of the bridge project was this deteriorating Warren Trust Bridge that has a long history of movement on the north abutment. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Vasey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Award bid to Bastion Communications, Avon, Ohio, in the amount of $173,656.40 for the 911 radio communications control system update with a related council and associated wiring. Bastia Communications was the only bid received and that includes an optional service contract for the third, fourth, and fifth years. So move. I'll second. Discussion. Are we, we're bidding this out for, or we, we're doing this for 173,000. 
and it includes the optional service contract with, for third, fourth, fifth year. But we don't, do we know what the service contract is, or is that something we have, don't we have to? You're not approving the uh, service contract at this time. It's an option that can be selected at a later date, sir. That's an option we can, it's not an automatic? Correct. Okay. Ms. Basic. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Instruct clerk to advertise for bids for the food service of Lorain County Correctional Facility. This notice will be published in the Chronicle Telegram and Morning Journal on December 4th and 11th, 2001, with a pre-bid on December 18th, 2001 at the jail. And bids will be open on January 2nd, 2002 at 2 p.m. in the public hearing room. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Moore. Aye. Ms. Basie. Aye. Award contract to GRX, Dave Richards, Elyria High in the amount of $5,860 for the Latimer ditch maintenance to include removal of trees and brush on approximately 450 feet of ditch bank, repairing two tile outlets and cleaning approximately 1,600 feet of ditch bottom. Issue a purchase order to DRX in the amount of $5,860 from the Latimer ditch maintenance fund. Two bids were received and this was the lowest bid received complying with specifications. So moved. Um, second. Discussion. Ms. Facey. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Authorize a change order number one in the amount of $13,760 to LaGrange Plumbing and Trenching, LaGrange, Ohio, to install 8-inch and 12-inch PVC Storm 35 storm drain to main hall installed in School Street, includes 16-inch PVC laterals to existing building downsprouts and new building storm drain for Emergency Operations Center. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Tracy? Aye. Authorized change order number one to I Diversified Services, Rock River, Ohio, in the amount of $812.20 for Emergency Operations Center and authorized county administrator to execute on behalf of the board. Item one is a concrete apron in the amount of $3,863.20. Item two, curb and existing building foundation is $1,920.20. Item three is to delete the canopy clotting system in the amount of $13,445. Modify entrance walk foundation in the amount of $4,887.30. And the high roof framing and canopy is $3,567.30 for the total change order of 81220. So move. Second. Discussion? Ms. Vasey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. County Mr. Ames. <coughs> I have a couple issues this morning. Uh, <clears throat> one is a uh, quick housekeeping issue. Um, I'd like to uh, request a resolution from the board modifying uh, a resolution that we did uh, two weeks ago, allowing the Port Authority to uh, enter the county's health care plan. Uh, we, the original resolution uh, was for January 1st, 2002. Uh, Port Authority uh, would like us to modify that to December 1st, 2001. Uh, we're prepared to uh, provide health care to their employees effective December 1st, and that's just a housekeeping issue. They were able to move faster than we, we anticipated. Uh, uh, so I request a resolution approving that action. What, what uh, employees does Port, Port Authority have? They have about four or five employees. There's not many. Oh, you mean for Lorraine Port Authority? Lorraine, Lorraine oh, okay. uh, City Port Authority. Okay. Uh, the, the County Port Authority doesn't have employees yet, I but hopefully someday they will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So moved. Second. <coughs> Further discussion? Ms. Vasey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Uh, I would also like to uh, request a resolution uh, to um, allow the county administrator to uh, work with the Village of Wellington to join the county's health care plan effective 1 January 2002. Uh, this is another uh, new political subdivision that has come, come rather, rather quickly to the table. I met with them. Yesterday, uh, Mr. Fo Ms. Steele were also present at the meeting. They're very enthusiastic about joining the county plan. Uh, so <coughs> like similar uh, uh, resolutions we've done, I'd, I'd like to be able to negotiate the terms, conditions, and uh, enter into a contract and uh, decide terms on their reserve factor over the life of that contract. Uh, uh, so I need a resolution to do that. Okay, I would move to authorize the uh, administrator to uh, negotiate a contract with uh, Wellington? Or, or uh, Wellington Village. Wellington Village. Second. Discussion? Ms. Vasey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. I would uh, also like to inform the board that I am 
presently uh, under dis uh, in discussions with a quasi-political subdivision uh, in the southern part of the county with approximately f uh, 40 employees for also joining the health care plan. A lot of people coming forward uh, right now uh, because we're in discussions and uh, we don't want to, uh, at this point, uh, reveal that agency until we've concluded some of those, uh, some of the issues that are on the table. But it looks like we'll have another medium-sized group joining also. It may come as quickly as January, but I'll have more information on that in a week or so for the board. So a lot of activity uh, with uh, people joining the county's health care plan. Jim, for the benefit of the, the public, would you explain what benefits this means to the communities to join the, the pool, the county's pool, and what it means to the county? Well, what it means to the, to the, to the community is that uh, for uh, political subdivisions uh, of Lorain County, uh, and those subdivisions, some of them are very easy to recognize, townships, villages, cities. Others are a little bit more difficult to recognize. That would be places like uh, metro housing, uh, possibly the Rural Water Authority, uh, Metro Parks. Uh, they, they are eligible to join our plan under the revised code, uh, and we can get, we gain benefit of having a larger pool of numbers to spread our claims over. The, the basic premise of insurance uh, is spreading risk. The more, the more people in the pool, the more you spread the risk, that hopefully that decreases the cost per capita per person in, in that plan. Uh, presently, uh, by year's end, we all have about 1,800 to 1,850 people uh, contracts in our plan with approximately 4,500 users that we cover. That's the uh, family members and uh, uh, also accounted with the employees. Uh, we've been able to gain uh, quite a bit of advantage in aggressively contracting uh, with healthcare uh, TPAs and providers and doing some direct contracting. Uh, we are several hundreds of dollars less in the county plan because of that aggressive management uh, than the uh, smaller uh, political uh, subdivisions are able to gain on their own. In some cases, we're saving them hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, therefore, uh, it, it behooves some of the smaller entities to uh, at least look at the county's plan. It's a, it's a, very, it's a very good health care plan. It's by no means a Cadillac, but, but it, serves, it serves a purpose. And it's, uh, it's a very cost-effective plan. We spend a lot of time uh, making sure that it's well-run and, and well taken care of. So I would encourage uh, uh, the political uh, subdivisions in Lorain County, and I should say that we could probably take political subdivisions anywhere in the state of Ohio. I don't know if they would want to join, so it's not just limited to Lorain County. I always say Lorain County because we've never branched outside the county, but uh, to uh, take a look at our plan because it helps them, and it certainly helps us because we would have more numbers to manage. Okay, thanks, Jim. Okay, Commissioner. Uh, I'd also like to, to make you aware that uh, our solid waste district uh, just got some words of accolade uh, uh, from uh, uh, from the Ohio EPA and it was some comments on their 2001 annual report and I read uh, the district did a very good job for completing the 2001 annual district report consequently I was unable to find anything that needed clarification or discussion the district provided information that many districts either are unable, to, unable or don't provide. Examples include tonnage of recyclables collected from individual opportunities and detailed narratives in the fifth column of the status of plan implementation. Ohio EPA greatly appreciates this information. Ohio EPA knows how time consuming and tedious, main, tedious maintaining detailed records like those kept by the district can be. The district's efforts are sincerely appreciated. I'd like to uh, recognize Mr. Billman and, and those efforts, and I'd like to give him a, 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 a really good job on, on that issue. I'd also uh, like to inform you that uh, Mr. Kelly spoke with me uh, yesterday, and I'll have further information next week, but we were successful in gaining uh, a $28,000 grant to pay for uh, all the office equipment that's going to be necessary to move into the new extension on the building. So uh, when I have more, I'll share that with you, but I was very pleased. It's $28,000 uh, that Tom went after, and very aggressively, uh, Commissioner Vasey always pushing us for the grant money. So. Uh, Tom's done a good job out there gaining that, so uh, that we've been very successful there. I have one housekeeping issue with you. Did we vote on the second loan? Uh, I know we had discussion here, but was, did you actually take a vote on that microenterprise loan? Yes, we did. Okay. 
Yes. Okay, I, I, I must have missed it, I apologize. And I'd like to defer to uh, Mr. Twining for one quick issue. My name is Ron Twining, uh, T-W-I-N-I-N-G. I'm the Community Development Director for Lorraine County. On behalf of the Board of Commissioners, the County Administrator, I am delighted to uh, share with the audience, both here in this room and at home watching on television, information that um, is in today, November 29th, Chronicle Telegram Special Advertisement section. I think this is certainly newsworthy. The state of Ohio every year honors century farms throughout the state. There are, the state is divided into four sections or regions and two farms that are 100 years of continuous operation in each region are selected for recognition um, at the state fair. This year, one of Lorain County's farm, Hickory Grove, which is operated by the McConnell family, um, was selected and honored at the state fair as one of the eight state regional winners. And we think that that certainly is, is good news. From that list of eight, the state then selects one statewide century farm winner. Um, and they receive signs and plaques commemorating this fact. Um, on September 19th at the State Farm Science Review in London, Ohio, this year Lorraine County um, McConnell Farm, Hickory Grove Farm was in fact selected as the state's top century um, farm award winner. Just as a brief history, um, it has been reported that great-great-grandfather Frank Whitney bought um, I believe it was 40 acres in 1892 and set up the, uh, the house and farming operation that long ago and it has remained in direct descendants of Frank Whitney since that time um, and continues to have a very bright future. Um, some of the interesting facts that were submitted as a part of this application I think are worth noting to uh, today. At one point, the kitchen of the family farmhouse was designated as the post office for Pittsfield Township um, and operated in that capacity for some time. It was also noted in the application that a trolley ran down what is known now as State Route 58 and picked up milk cans from that particular farm and delivered them in Wellington, Ohio for the cheese factory. And as you know, Wellington is still known as the cheese capital of the world. And certainly just prior and shortly after the turn of the century, Wellington was one of the uh, world's leading locations for producing cheese. Um, the article is very nice. It's spread out over four pages. It's in today's Chronicle Telegram. And I'm sure that the county administrator, certainly our office that has worked with the McConnell family through township business in Pittsfield as well as um, Jim McConnell um, served as the farmland retention chairman for uh, the farmland report that the commissioners permitted us to do. Um, I'm sure that all of us would like to publicly recognize this award and uh, extend our congratulations to the McConnell family. I think it would be good for the board to send a certificate to. And you know, something that has always interested me is when you talk about Lorraine County and, and jobs, people are always thinking the Ford plant and the steel mill. It's not so. Lorraine County is actually the, uh, agriculture. That's our biggest industry in the county. And people just don't realize that. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you take care of the, uh, the citation from the board? Thank you. Uh, commissioners, I need a, to request a res, uh, amendment to resolution 01-1011, uh, which was adopted on November 1st concerning uh, our contract uh, dollar value with the Workforce Institute of Warren County. Uh, some additional funds have become available. Uh, those additional funds are $344,188, which were carried over from previous program year, which ended June 30th, 2001. We are requesting an increase from 
dollars to one million six hundred forty nine thousand seven hundred ten. Uh, the funding uh, source for the increase is the WEA funds carried over, and the funds will be uh, used for individual training accounts for adult customers and other training needs as, as necessary. <coughs> Mr. Ogle is here to speak to that issue should you have any questions. I have no questions. No. So moved. Second. Further discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Basic. My, my final piece of action this morning <coughs> is concerning a lease agreement. Um, what I did with it here. Uh, Simon Dodge um, leases a vehicle to the county that they ultimately pay for for the DARE program. Uh, we have uh, this year they they, they have uh, been generous enough to provide a PT cruiser on a three-year lease. We enter into the to the lease. Uh, as the county and then Sliman does an MOU with us and they pick up and pay for that lease for the DARE program. Uh, I'm requesting a resolution to allow me to enter into the agreement on the lease and to sign all the necessary paperwork to gain that vehicle on behalf of the county and the DARE program uh, with the understanding that an MOU will be uh, coming uh, that will uh, result in no cost to the county on this lease agreement. And the, the vehicle will be covered by Corsa? Yes. County insurance? That's correct, Commissioner. Okay. Very great. So moved. Second. Further discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Basie? Aye. Um, that concludes my issues. Thank you, Commissioners. Mr. Ernest, this is the first gear. If the, uh, if the commissioners are going to have an executive session today, uh, there are a litigation issue I can update you on. You don't need to have that today. You're pressed for time. Uh, other than that, does my assistant have a report at all? <laughs> she can't on TV. <laughs> we have nothing else to report. Okay, thank you. Commissioner's report? Uh, yeah, I have several things. First of all, I've asked Dan Billman here, the director for the Solid Waste Department, to tell us a little bit about the appliance collection uh, statistics that we just had in 2001. I think they did a great job, saved the county a lot of money. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, Dan Billman, B-I-L-L-M-A-N. I'm the Solid Waste Director. Um, this last uh, collection process that we had for the appliances, hard goods, basically, uh, was an exceptional event for the county. Uh, we collected oh, well over twice as many uh, appliances as we did any other year. And that was done because we contracted with St. Vincent de Paul, uh, and they did a very good job. Uh, what had transpired is we uh, contracted with them for one week, and they, because of the response of the residents in the county, uh, extended their, um, their pickup for another week, uh, eight additional days. And then beyond that, um, they did a 10 additional pickups in August, um, and they did that at no charge for us. Um, also, along with the, with the uh, appliances that we picked up, um, that they picked up, they also uh, picked up uh, box springs, which we got 85 box springs uh, picked up and 96 mattresses picked up. They also picked up an assortment of, of uh, TVs and, and uh, lamps and ringer washers and eight uh, water heaters stuff that they wouldn't normally have picked up, but they did it as a service to us. So, uh, the, as I said, uh, St. Vincent de Paul did a tremendous job, and, and um, I'm just tickled to death that uh, we have all these uh, units that didn't go into the landfill. Uh, and most of them uh, went into the recycling process. They, St. Vincent de Paul either uh, refurbished them and put them back out in the marketplace, um, or if they were determined to be uh, of substantial uh, value. Um, there was 100% recovery of the mattresses and, and the box springs. They, they rebuild these and then they um, put them back out in the marketplace. So other than that, that's just about it. Do you have any other questions on that? No, but the cost was great too. It only cost us $800 and 500 came from the <coughs> Ohio Department of Natural Resources. So it right. actually only cost the county $300. And didn't St. Vincent go to the house and pick up these appliances and things right. instead of people dropping them off somewhere? This is the first time that we didn't have uh, our drop-off facilities, which were they were located all over the county. Um, this time, 
they actually had a, a, about eight trucks that went all through the county and uh, picked up the, uh, the uh, appliances from the residents, which it actually created some problems because sometimes the residents were uh, people that were not able to bring the appliances out of their basement, out of their house, and St. Vincent de Paul did require that they were on the porch or on the ground. But well. the one interesting thing about this is, and we continue to have the problem, and I'm, I'm not so certain how we're going to deal with it in the future, but the, one of the biggest reasons we pick up these refrigerators and these appliances is to keep them out of the landfill. The second thing is, is to keep the Freon from being vented into the atmosphere out of the refrigerators and freezers. Um, it's almost like uh, it should be a responsibility of the selling dealer to take back the appliance and take care of that. Um, and we're seeing this, some of, the, some of that type of uh, thinking going on in the uh, computer industry now to where um, they've got some programs going on now where if you buy a computer, the store will take back that computer and make sure it gets recycled. So it'd be nice to see some of the <coughs> other um, appliance stores step up to the plate and start taking back some of their appliances and disposing them in a proper manner. We do have some, some stores in the county that are doing that already, so we'd like to improve on that and possibly um, in the years to come we won't have this much problem with, with the amount of refrigerators and freezers that we have now. But some of those can be recycled and reused. Right. Well, all the appliances basically can be recycled, whether they're... Um, but I mean, they reused. Yeah, refurbished and used. reused, yes. Right. Uh, uh, they, they, I don't have how many, how many uh, refrigerators they actually uh, put back on the marketplace, but it was a good number. Some of the older ones are just not serviceable enough for them to do that. Dan, one question. Is this just one time a year, or will St. Vincent's come out any time? Um, at this point in time, I'm not so certain what St. Vincent's de Paul uh, uh, policy is in coming into the county. This was a one-shot deal for them. It was something that they wanted to try. Um, it, it actually overwhelmed them. Um, so we'll have to wait and see whether they want to do it again uh, when we do the uh, next collection. Maybe if we do it more frequently, it wouldn't be so overwhelming. So hopefully they'll do it, and, and maybe if they do, you can publicize it and let the public know that when they do have these uh, items that they can just call someone and have them picked up? Yeah, at this point in time, they don't do a lot in the county or in county. <coughs> Hopefully um, we, we get, try to set we up a, to we wanted them to uh, possibly do a, um, a program with the Jobs and Family Services, but um, that did not work out um, because of economic conditions. Okay. But, that's something we're going we're gonna to continue to work on, though. Thanks, Dan. Do you have any questions? No. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you, staff. Take a, the students got to leave. Yeah. Uh, the, the class has to leave. Their bus is waiting for them. So we're going to just take a couple minutes here to let them leave so they don't disturb the meeting. And also then Mr. Stewart is here for the 1025. Thanks for coming. Mike, December, because EPA is not Madam going Clerk, to say that that's it. Do you have anything further? So I said that. I'll go on after we do this. Oh, you want to do this now? Mr. Mark Stewart, Lorain County Auditor is here regarding the VHI Free of County Parcels. Welcome, Mark. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mark Stewart, uh, Lorain County Auditor, S-T-E-W-A-R-T. -E uh, thank you for your invitation this morning regarding this program of uh, building in the image database in Lorain County. Uh, I think probably this has been fully and fairly explained in the news media quite a bit in this last month, but I think maybe I could recap for you uh, what the goals of the program are. Uh, that our main goal is to verify address in regards to parcel numbers and, and uh, valuing of property. To audit the field maps for quality control purposes, for the grading of houses as to their condition, good, average, above average, excellent, and so on, 
to capture these images uh, in digital photography to support the Board of Revision and the, and the appraisal process. So those are some of the goals that the program is to, to uh, answer and why we think that this is a very important part of the puzzle that Lorain County is trying to put together. Uh, there are some side benefits, and I think those side benefits would be to help uh, a 911 emergency, and we have agreed uh, with a 911 emergency system to share our data with them. Uh, we had several meetings with them and have agreed to do so. Uh, we have also agreed to share this information with other cities and have some uh, complementary uh, side agreements on that. I know that this is very good for the appraisal industry uh, who often uses this information in the appraisal process and the insurance industry in the, in the, uh, in the process of doing and covering homes. Uh, it also has many, many GIS applications. So. Th these are some of the goals and uh, issues in which we think that this program is going to benefit Lorraine County. I must compliment the uh, news media for writing an excellent uh, summary of the products uh, that we're offering. Uh, the Chronicle Telegram gave excellent coverage. Uh, I don't think there should be any doubt if anybody read the newspaper as to what this program is about. I don't think it's any mystery. And we did that prior to going out and taking the picture. So we're not trying to hide anything. I think it should be very clear and evident as to what the, those goals are. Uh, especially the uh, TJ Morocco at the Chronicle. I think his editorial hit the nail on the head exactly. Lorraine County Auditor's Office could have picked a better time to send out the photo crew. I could have. Uh, it, it was just an unfortunate situation with September, and I think we should be mindful of that. But Lorain County has been taking photos for over the last three years. We have 30,000 photos already on the database, and these have caused no problem to Lorain County residents. I've been in the Avon Lake Press. I've been in the Plain Dealer. I've even been interviewed on television by Paul Orlowski. I've never had this much attention when I was running for office. So, and, and, and I welcome that, and I think it's important that our, our people be aware of what we're trying to do. Uh, but I think uh, Mr. Morocco says the timing was unfortunate. But I did not sit down and sign that contract after September 11th. That contract and work on that contract took place in the spring of 2001 in the spring, and we were doing due diligence in explaining and finding out what this photo imaging process was going to be. But uh, it should not cause much alarm. I know it's, it's important, and I know that we need to be concerned about people's concerns. So we have uh, set up a system to, to log their concern, to answer their letters, and to talk to the taxpayers about that. This has been going on in many counties. It's just not Lorraine County. Delaware County, uh, Hamilton County, Montgomery County. Uh, uh, Lorraine County is not the leader in this, but we are right up amongst the pack leading uh, the 88 counties in, in Lorraine County. So I think, the, uh, I, I think we've had more than enough public exposure on this. Uh, I think that we need to go through what the history of technology is in Lorain County and what these goals are. I've been around a long time and I see my old boss here, Mr. Herb Jacoby. He left. Oh, is he still here? <laughs> okay. And he was the chief appraiser for Lorain County for many, many years. And one of the complaints that we both had was that this information was, was stationary in the auditor's office and could not be getting given out to the public without them taking off work and coming into this county. It was a very bad situation and, and is getting better because of technology. I've been around in these reappraisals in 76, 82, 88, 94, and 2000. During each six year period, technology has, has moved this county forward in regard to the appraisal process. In 1976, we had a mainframe that printed 
the duplicate on big 24 by 36 inch paper and it had a cross index. Not the appraisal cards. So you had to be able to know how to spell your name, look it up on a cross index to go to 84 books that were in the treasurer's office. In 1982, the mainframe uh, was extended up into the offices with lines for a read-only or retrieve-only type of technology. That improved so when a taxpayer called and said, what is my value, we could log in and say, this is what your value is. Who owns this piece of property and so on. So that technology has really started this moving forward. That's in 1983. 88, these terminals were able then to print graphic information, which means sketch, taxes, and so on. In 1994, the PCs came into the county in which we had a modem. You could dial up into, I'm sure, Commissioner Moore and your in your days on uh, the mortgage business, you may have been logging into the county system through a modem, getting this information. This was pushing it forward, pushing it out to the community. There was a little ruffle now and then, but still we're moving forward. In 2000, now we are on an internet, internet base. And on this internet, people can use this on their PCs at home at their own convenience. They don't have to ha log into any special equipment, we don't need to specially train them, it's very user friendly. So it's an enhancement, this is an outgrowth of that. Uh, and this internet based has been in this county for, since, since May of 1999. So this is not new technology, it has been there. And in July of 99 we went open to the public. Now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the statistics because you know, statistics can say a lot. There are over 20,000 users of this system. 20,000. I don't keep track of these numbers. Emerge, our vendor keeps track of that. People log into the system, there is a registration process. But 20,000 people are dependent upon the system. We have some paying customers in that also. Over 2,000 people pay to have this access for a full year. It's 14 days for free. Any taxpayer can use that. They don't want to pay the $10 fee, they can come back up to the county and get it for free. So these are important things. Of those 20,000 users, since May of 1999, 180,000 hits have been on the system. This system is a dependent kind of information technology that people want. This is what the people want. If this product was no good, we would see this at 3,000 hits. But this is a very important product. So uh, it, people are speaking with numbers. Now, I think we should you know, say we've had phone calls on this. That's absolutely true. With the media attention, and I think we want the people to call in. We have had documented, I brought Mr. Tim Ayer up here if you'd like to question him, but we have had less than 50 people who are adamantly against this and in writing. Now, I don't know how many letters you have up here, but in, I corresponded with this board and asked you to forward each and every phone call and each and every letter that you have so I can properly log these statistics. But I think this, these concerns need to be met. And if somebody wants their photos stricken from the internet, I will do so, but only in writing. Because I need to know what property we're talking about. There's 145,000 parcels in this county. So I think it's important to know that. Uh, the way I view this is uh, with 30,000 photos already on the internet, with sales, with information, with sketch, and so on. I view this as kind of an alphabet soup, okay? Uh, these 30,000 photos are, are the consonants in the alphabet. And the images that we are going to put in into the internet with this project are gonna be the vowels. So you gotta have consonants and you gotta have vowels. 
right? That's, that's the story you need to tell. You need to have, have the words to be able to put the words together to make this project. So this is a highway of information. I wish Mrs. Blair was here because I, I know her frustration with Interstate 90. Interstate 90 has three lanes, but we're not using three lanes, are we? And Cuyahoga County doesn't want three lanes because people are coming to Lorain County. Why are they coming to Lorain County? One of the reasons is we have good taxes. We have good values. They're looking up this information on the internet. This is the information highway that the county auditor system is. We want to improve that technology. This technology is going to make this county grow. It is not going to hurt this county. So, in summary, I think what we need to do is commit to a letter. Any taxpayer who does not, an owner, does not want their photo on the internet, I will abide by their wishes. I don't think that uh, I'm going to force anybody to have it on the internet. I am going to retain it in the auditor's appraisal records within this building. That is, is very important for me to have that. Uh, I think we need to commit to a letter. Uh, our, our mailing address is 226 Middle Avenue, Lorain County Auditor, Gary, <coughs> Ohio. Our email address, and if you're going to email in, you have to have the address of the property. Uh, auditor at LorainCounty.com. And if you want to just check this out, if you want to see what this is about, I think it's important, you would go to our website at LorainCounty.com slash auditor. I think Christian Yarborough even had what channels I would be on. Uh, channel, where, even in Kipton, Ohio. I'm very appreciative for Kipton, Ohio on this. So. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, the extent of my uh, presentation here to you, but I think it's an explanation. Uh, I think it's a progression of information. Information is power in this county. And Mrs. Vasey, you just made a comment. There's more here than the steel plant. And let me tell you, it's the information. If you want this county to grow, this is the program to help it along. Thank you. I appreciate you coming in, Mark. The, uh, um, the fact is, I think because you are talking to the media is why probably there is much more interest in this uh, issue, and that's why I appreciate you coming in to talk. And really, it was more to the community. I think this is another avenue. There's just more than newspapers to get your message out. And I think well, this I, was I more appropriate. The, I did request the right. administrative meeting, and I guess that's your viewpoint is one way, my viewpoint right. was another. Right. I just felt that it was a public meeting and we could have brought up the technology uh, to show with the videos and, and how it would be used and that the public could uh, come up here and see the exact image. And I would say today, and I am willing and able any day for any taxpayer to come downstairs and they can look at these images. And they can look at these images as we are reviewing them. Okay, so so it's important uh, to them, and, and uh, if they want to just come down and take a look at it and discuss the project. So you're looking at to get your, na your uh, information off the internet. You have to put your name and your address. Do you want a and parcel number? And the address number? of the property. Well, if they have the parcel number, that's best. But you know, there's a lot of John Smiths, and right. I want my I want my property out of the internet. Well, which John Smith is that? So I think we have to nail that down. If you would have a phone number and we're a little confused as to which property it is, then I think that uh, so it would help. we may call you back and say which exact property is it. Okay, if so you have multiple properties, you better put them all down. Okay. And I think then we keep the statistics. We keep the statistics. You'll still have the statistics, and if people want to come in, they can still view Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We have. Which is public record, correct? Which is public record. Okay. We have a list of everybody who is on the internet. So for now, when we get phone calls, we can just refer them to you. I would as appreciate As long as we got it. the information, all you have right. to do if you don't want it in the, on the internet, put your name, address, phone number, on and a you letter will take it off the internet. I don't want to be a part of the internet on that uh, with my photo in there. That's okay. that perfectly fine. I'll get you my letter today. <laughs> <laughs> I really do appreciate you coming in and explaining it to the people, though. I really okay. do appreciate that. And I think we have a lot of people here that have other questions. Mm -hmm. uh, would you be willing to answer those? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Maletti? Uh, I'd like to bring up the fact that uh, I'm on the Lorraine County Planning Commission, 
due to the fact that the uh, Ohio Revised Code does not require a farmer to pay a building fee when he wants to put up a new building. But the problem lies in the fact that the it's nothing submitted to the township, and therefore if the township does not submit it to the, Mr. Stewart, there's no taxes paid on that, and it would go sometimes as high as six years before it's ever bought. It's, it's cheating the people of the township, the uh, taxes are being paid for the roads and schools, and I, I realize what he's up against, and uh, I would like to bring this fact out. It hasn't been brought up at all. I, I think I can expand on that a little bit. What, what's happened is, uh, this is a great tool for every township zoning inspector. Uh, you know, I didn't say exactly who's using the system, but you know, there is a chronicle, and I'm not talking about the paper, of people who are using this. Zoning inspectors, libraries, township clerks, schools, human services department, numbers of human service department employees are using this program. And the reason why is you can't get on welfare if you own a bunch of property. That's the whole idea, you know? So the prosecutor's office is using this. People in the FBI are on our website. Engineers, the clerk of courts, mayor's offices, and I have a lot of mayor's offices that are on the internet, more than uh, you know, uh, a, a good few of them. Sheriff's Department, child support, colleges, metro parks, community development, and firemen. So uh, what he's talking about is if, if they have, to, if you're putting up a pole building out in the agricultural area, those are specifically exempted from a fee. You don't have to pay to build, but you should be paying for taxes because it is a piece of real property. And that's the only way the auditor knows that these pole buildings are constructed. So we need to know, and, that, and that's a service that we've offered to the townships. These people are logging in and using our system. And we keep the system up to date. And you know, pretty soon the maps are gonna be on the internet. So I think this is gonna be a very good tool, a useful tool that people are depending upon. Sir. Would you come up, please, and give your name and spell your last name? I'm Don Krebs, living in Henrietta. And uh, my question is, this uh, video uh, that is available on the internet, uh, I read somewhere that the, uh, there was a particular uh, section of it that says, uh, they also give the uh, easiest access to them that home. And I was concerned about the security of that type of information on the internet. Could you answer that, uh, Mr. Stewart? There is absolutely no validity to that whatsoever. Uh, this is a quick shot, probably takes three or four seconds to verify they hit the button. Uh, in front of the house, and that is that is the extent of it. There, there is no coordination as to doorways, windows, uh, cable TV hookups, water hookups, or anything of the like. There's just absolutely no uh, no correlation to that whatsoever. Sir. <coughs> My name is Robert Dempsey, D-E-M-P-S-E-Y. I live in Henrietta Township, and um, I'll address a couple of the questions um, that the auditor seemed to pose uh, to you. Um, Mr. Krebs, who just spoke, I think he might have got the information from the first article, uh, October 13th, in the Chronicle Telegram, where Mr. Aura stated that this was one of the purposes and how it would benefit police and fire department that they would be able to find entryways and exit ways. So it's not a falsehood. That was what Mr. Ora presented to whomever it was. Um, sorry, I was trying to write quick when the, the auditor was speaking. He mentioned that um, since May 1999, he's had 180,000 hits on his website. 
I'm not for sure on this, but I think if we'd go back to that time frame, that would have been about the time the Chronicle posted the website address for people who could get information on their property values, not necessarily the pictures, but the property values. And it was listed the website, um, Chronicle, Telegram, Morning Journal, uh, whomever. Um, at that point, there was a flurry of activity, I'm sure, because I got a lot of phone calls from people that stated, wow, what a nice house you have. I didn't know it was worth that much. These are nosy people. These are people that are worried about what their neighbors are doing. Um, and in addition to that, I hope they're just nosy people, uh, that they weren't anything any worse. Uh, I appreciated uh, him changing his policy at the point where we could have our pictures removed. But I'd have to ask him, um, what rights do the private citizens have against having their privacy invaded in this way? And that's the way I feel that my privacy and my home's privacy is invaded. I think some of the other people here agree. Um, apparently what we're saying is that the auditor or the government or the FBI or the mayor's office or all these other people that are accessing this information that he stated, they like to have this information. Well, good for them and they can come right to Mr. Auditor's, uh, Mr. Stewart's office and get that information. But there's a lot of other people that are just nosy and perhaps undesirables. Now, in regards to the picture taking, uh, I've done a little research and I, uh, I accessed it, in fact, this morning to get my 14 free days uh, that were available on there, because <laughs> I'm not gonna pay the fee later. But I checked on some uh, family property uh, that I already know about, so I wouldn't be invading anybody else's privacy. There's pictures on there of the front and the rear of the houses. And I would have to ask the auditor how the picture takers are gaining access to person's private property to get to the rear of their homes to take pictures that they're posting on the internet. And I'm not sure that that's legal. Maybe Mr. Ennis has some information on that. Is it, is it legal for representatives of the auditor's department to walk onto your property to the rear of your home and take a picture of the rear of your house You, uh, there, there, there is a statute that there allows. Is, there is a statute in the uh, in regard to the appraisal of the process because you have to get onto the property if you're going to going to have building permits and you're going to put a value on that. And the state revised code allows that the auditor is permitted to go out there and view the property. It's completely legal. And on the other question that we had from Mr. Dempsey is that we had two websites two websites. This website had no connection with the revaluation website and that's the website that the Chronicle published. And that website has nothing to do with the statistics here. That old website had the old value and the new value so that a person could make a determination whether or not that their value was fair. This does not have anything to do with that website but it's perfectly permissible for the auditor to, to enter upon the property. I, I would just indicate that uh, uh, at an earlier meeting, uh, the commissioners asked something about it, and at that point I expressed uh, uh, the view that I was uh, unaware of any uh, court decisions or anything that had indicated that this is not a legal process. We've done some follow-up research on that. Uh, as Mark has indicated, this has been being done in other counties and in other states for a while. Uh, the ability of the auditor to go onto the property to fill his uh, <coughs> job of making appraisals and evaluating part property is clearly authorized by statute. We have not found any cases or any rulings of any sort that indicate that the taking of pictures and then the subsequent posting of that on internet uh, changes the rules uh, that are that are out there. Obviously, uh, at some point in time, you know, you can't be you know, going up into the back of windows and taking pictures inside the house or doing anything like that. But um, uh, to this point, we we have not been able to locate any decisions or rulings of any kind that would uh, have declared this to be an invasion of, of privacy. I 
I think that that's why a lot of people are concerned that we're back to where we just started. Apparently, individual homeowners are lacking a lot of rights here, and they feel threatened, and they feel concerned about the way things are going, um, specifically with uh, technology-wise, because you're right, this isn't an issue that was a problem 10, 12 years ago, because the proliferation of the internet and PCs and the easy access that people have um, has, has changed that. Um, Auditor Stewart brought up a, uh, a point here from Mr. Morocco's uh, editorial page um, comments about how the timing was bad since 9-11. I find that interesting because um, I'm not sure what he meant by the timing was bad because everybody all of a sudden felt threatened because we found out that we're, uh, our vulnerability is such that we can be attacked at home and all of a sudden everybody was threatened and hence it's bad timing to put pictures of people's homes on the internet because they're going to feel threatened. It pretty much proves the point um, what we're talking about. And yes, people are, have a heightened awareness and that's been handed down to us from the federal level where people do have to pay attention more uh, to protect themselves, to protect our communities. Um, I think that's why people are upset, why people haven't, and people that I've spoken to, why they haven't voiced this earlier from years uh, ago when he, uh, when the auditor started taking pictures and such, is I think we are all ignorant to the fact that this is what was going on. And I realize that uh, he may have addressed to the commissioner's meeting and these were public forums and there may have been articles written in the newspaper, but realistically not everybody picks up on all these things that are going on so usually it takes a an incident or a catastrophic incident in the case of 9-11 to heighten people's awareness that's why everybody is upset right now or at least why I am my family members and people are around me that's why they're upset um, and it's not going to go away people are going to continue to be upset we're going to be continuing to have a heightened awareness and we are still at war and this is why people are concerned and they're going to remain to be concerned. I'm sure this program is a great program um, for people that need to collect this data. There's no doubt in my mind the uh, importance of the auditor having accurate information for the assessing a tax property for other government agencies to determine right of ways. Um, I, I thoroughly understand that. My concern and perhaps some of the other concerns of other people uh, here is that we're posting this on the internet for people to A, be nosy to find out what's going on with their neighbors or what their property values are. B, perhaps to find out who the lending institution is because some of that information is also on that website. If you are the homeowner, but uh, there's bank names and things on there, which I imagine is for who uh, still has the deed to the property, it's not gonna go away. And people are gonna be upset. And I appreciate Auditor Stewart's having people write into him asking to have their photos removed. It still doesn't remove the floor plans that are all sketched on there that shows you where your bedrooms are at, where uh, your living room is at. It doesn't remove the, some of the, or if it does, that would be great. It doesn't remove some of the other uh, information that's on there. I would suggest to him uh, to consider the possibility of doing just the opposite, that he collects the data that he needs, that he keeps the data here, and that people that are authorized that want to get the data from title agencies or realtors uh, other government agencies can go to his office or contact his office and if people choose to have this information posted on the internet that they could fill out a form that says I wish to have my information on the internet not the opposite that we have to wish to have our information not put on the internet uh, I think we have it backwards um, hopefully I think uh, he would consider uh, some of those options and, and lastly I was wondering uh, a direct question uh, to the auditor is does the auditor's office have a written policy regarding the giving out of public information? Or can anybody who just walks into the office can say, I want to know such and such about this person's property, or is there anything that they have to do? I mean, can felons get the information? Can potential terrorists, can anybody just walk in and say, it's public knowledge, I want it? Generally speaking, any record that is in the possession of a public official is a public document. And these are, we face these challenges all the time. Uh, people buy and sell real estate. 
the Chronicle Telegram is over there, the Lorraine Journal is over there, and they get copies of the buyer and the seller and what they paid for this. People are nosy. I don't think it's news, but people in the news media think it's news. And you've got a lot of people who know who's buying and selling out there. Now, I know they're looking at it. I absolutely know they're looking at it. And any document within our possession is public record. If someone wants to come up and look at Mary Jo Vasey's house, they are permitted to do so. That is their right. Not that I'm trying to uh, hide anything, not that I'm trying to uh, withhold anything from, uh, from the public. This is their right. They pay for these things, it's their right. Anybody who is on our internet in the registration process, uh, you're more than welcome, the news media is more than welcome to come down and look at who has logged on to our system. I think it does prevent and it has some security to it because we make them say who they are in that registration process. And will we tighten it up? More than likely in light of what's happened on September 11th. Uh, and I think it's, it's quite unfortunate and Mr. Dempsey is, is uh, uh, mischaracterizing what is available. We don't know where your bedrooms are. We don't know where the bathrooms are. We, you have an exterior sketch that's available on the duplicate. That's what's available. It's an exterior sketch. That's what's there. So let's not represent, misrepresent. Ma'am. <laughs> Uh, my name is Darlene Anderson. Um, I'm also concerned over these pictures. I came here very irritated. I was going to leave happy that you're letting me send a letter saying I don't want my property on. I'm back to irritation again. Um, the newspapers reported fairly. You guys spoke fairly. We were told that public access, what they can see from the road, they will take a picture of. You cannot see the back of my house from the road. If you're getting pictures of the back of my house, you have misrepresented this program. And the newspapers weren't told or left that part out. That is a violation. There's public access and there's public records. We did not choose to make our homes public records. Anything in my possession as a public official is public record. If I go out and take a picture of somebody's house and have it in my possession, it's now a public record. It is not a public record as it stands on my street. It may have public access. You can view it from the street. You see an address. If I choose not to have my name in the phone book, they don't know that 1560 Lake Breeze Road belongs to Darlene Anderson. Now they will. He has made, you have made, it public record. I don't want misrepresenting these people to think pictures of their homes, front and back and side and whatever, are public record. That is not true. They're public record when they come into your hands. They came into your hands because you spent our taxpayer dollars to go take those pictures and put them in your files. Now they're public record. They weren't before. Public access is completely different. Um, I understand the benefit being a public official, being in charge of building departments. Sheffield Village pays its $10 and is part of this website. We use this as a tool. Um, in doing so, have you I looked absolutely, at any pictures on there? Absolutely not. You've never looked at any pictures? Never. My computer is not even hooked up to the internet, I'll have you know. Never, not once. I don't even know to this day if mine's on there. And that's because I live by a different set of standards. I do unto others as I would have them do unto me. I don't want people looking at mine. I know they will. That's okay. You've made that public record now. I'm very happy that you've given us the choice. I'm very happy with that. However, I, I agree with a couple things. Information is power. Now we have to safeguard who that information is going to. I don't want you to look into further security measures. I want you to guarantee you're going to do some further security measures. Um, we didn't think anything tragic could happen up till September 10th, and it did. You can quote me all the statistics you want, but every other community that's put pictures on the internet has not had a problem. It's first time for everything. I don't want our communities to be the first ones. Ask any sheriff's department or police department. High tech crime is on the rise. You can't believe the crimes that are committed, that used to be committed in person, that are being committed on the internet now. Um, we have to be careful who we're giving this information to. 
and, and I think that's very, very important. I would still like an answer. I understand legally you're allowed to go on the property and take pictures. I haven't heard, is that in fact being done? And why didn't you tell the newspapers so they could report? We were told specifically that they can get a picture from the street, and that's all they were doing. The van's driving by with the window open. I've seen them. Are they getting out of that van and stepping foot on my property? Do I need to approach that? Yes, please. My name is Tim Ara, A-R-R-A. -R -R -A. Um, I'm going to answer your question. Um, the, there's two different, um, we're not misrepresenting the project. The vans are operating from the public right of way. They're not entering onto anyone's property. Um, the photos that they are taking will be a supplement to our current um, internet site and the auditor's records, public records. Um, the photos that you're referring to where they're um, capturing the, the front of the building and the rear of the building, those were um, started in 1994 with um, deputy auditors um, taking pictures for um, real estate purposes. There, we have um, in the Ohio Revised Code um, statutes that allow us to go onto the property that was mentioned earlier in today's meeting, and we use those for appraisal purposes. Okay. Okay. So we're, they're not the project is not represented or misrepresented um, to the public. They're not going onto the public property, and they're operating from the public right of way. The second thing I'd like to address was when Mr. Dempsey was um, at the microphone. Um, he mentioned how um, our conversation that um, emergency management officials um, will be able to better respond to seeing a photo of a person's house. Um, that's the actual um, purpose would be for um, the verification of the location address field um, in our records corresponding with um, Emergency Management's Master Street Addressing Guide, which they cooperate with the local law enforcement agencies um, to transfer information that is um, uh, correct, so that we know exactly 101 East Main Street is this appropriate address instead of on the other sec section of road. That's all. I had a couple other things. Um, I, I understand that a lot of people will benefit from this program. Um, I took the liberty, because what had been in the newspaper, I took the liberty of calling um, some of these places. I called my insurance agent. My insurance rates are not going to drop um, because they can access this information. Um, my, um, that's for my house insurance. Um, you, you said that um, appraisers um, can, can do this. Um, I called a girl who used to be on council who is a real estate agent. Um, real estates are not going to drop the percentage they still charge me to sell my house because this information is now readily available. Um, I'm guessing my property taxes aren't going to drop because now you have access to this more readily. I guess what I want all of us to be aware of is when we make a decision to spend public monies, let me clarify that. When I make a decision to go to council and ask to spend public monies, I'm always very mindful that the money I'm spending benefits my community and my residents. I don't feel that consideration was given in this case. I think um, some small groups, appraisers, real estate, whoever those groups are, will benefit. A government, a building department is one of them. Um, I don't think the whole was given the benefit of seeing will this, the majority of the residents of Lorain County um, benefit. I don't think that was done. Um, again, I want to say I appreciate the fact that we can now, what was reported earlier was that it might be too costly to put in a program where we would be able to have the pictures taken off. I appreciate the fact that you're doing that um, and I think it's important, whether it's people write in saying yes we want it on or people writing in say we don't want it on. Um, if those of us that are concerned, and, and to the audience, I'll address, if it's five minutes out of your time, I'll write a letter, I'll have it in my office, call me, and all you have to do is sign your name and fill in your address. Um, take five minutes and do it if it's that important to you. Um, 
but I would hope that on these types of decisions and this kind of money that's being spent, that we would take a closer look and, and hold our elected people accountable for how they're spending the money and get the information before we have to read that it's going to be done by December 15th. Because that's the first I heard of it, mm -hmm. is when they advertised it. I called the commissioners and said, how did this happen? And they said, well, we approve your budget, but they didn't know this specific program was being done, is what I was told. Um, and I was led to believe that it was just entirely your decision. Um, whether that's true or not, it, it doesn't matter. I can agree to disagree with you. I appreciate the fact that um, we can have it taken off. Thanks. OK, I think we'll take a couple more questions. Renee C. Gill, G as in girl, I-L-L. -L. I think when we go into doing anything, we need to have a group of people, of, of, a variety of people from all sorts of socioeconomic and professionalism, real estate, whatever. When we go into making a plan, we need to have a planning commission so that everybody can look at the situation. I'm speaking on behalf of foster parents and adoptive parents. We have children in our home that have family members that are very violent, very angry, and they have not been able to find these children. I have some children in my home that have been in the system for nine years up until yesterday. There was no problem whatsoever. I understand, Mr. Stewart, you're in a hell of a position right now. Everybody's angry at you because you are the head of this thing. And I know that you're not the only one to make decisions. But at the same time, now, I'm not going to give the strong man to my house. I'm not going to risk the safety of my children that I have taken into love. So what am I going to do? I'm in a potentially dangerous situation because I'm going to have to defend my family if anyone comes to my house. Now, I was at the school. I got a 911 from Cuyahoga County Children's Services telling me that they have found me. Ignorance is not bliss, but it was real good for me when they didn't know that this was public information and that they could go down there to the auditor's office and find me immediately. But now that it has been all of this media humbo jumbo, and in Cuyahoga County, Cleveland, the news, like you said, you, when you was running, you didn't go through this. Now all of the media attention and everything has made these people aware how I can find this woman, how I can find my nieces, my grandchildren, or my children. And they are not suitable, they are not fit, that's why they're in my home. So right now I have been placed in a very dangerous situation and I will do what I have to do to protect my children, to protect my family, to protect my property. So if they are to go in the backyard, I don't know if you're doing this or not. It, we're hearing a lot of things, okay? The media sells papers. This is their job. They have to get it interesting. But at the same time, I have a back door. Nobody would ever know that back door was there. I have these windows that you can come in through the back. Nobody would have ever known. Are you going in people's backyard? Are you coming on my property and giving them that picture from the rear? Because we were told that the van would be out on the street and blase, blase. And like she said, in the phone book, I list my number as R.C. Gill. Nobody knows that's Renee Gill. Nobody knows who that is until somebody that knows we know it. And so you have put people in, it's a variety of people in different positions, and we should have looked at it before we stepped it out there. As of December 15th, this is what's going to take place. Because it's a lot of different situations, and it's some dangerous <laughs> situations. You have the seniors that live by themselves, 89. Look at what's happened all of a sudden. All of a sudden, it's been a rash of break-ins on 80 and 90-year-old women, single head of household. We have to look at what we're doing to our community before we say that we're better in our community. <laughs> My name is Richard Banks, B-A-N-K-S. I live in South Amherst, Ohio. I'm also the business representative for the Ohio State Council of Carpenters. Every day I see new industry moving into Lorain County. <clears throat> With industry comes people. People have to find places to live. I think this is a very excellent way of these people finding a place to live. As far as it goes for criminals getting onto the internet and finding out <coughs> where people live and how to break into houses, how many, a couple of sheriff deputies here, how many People actually spend the time to get on the internet to break into people's houses. They may find out for two weeks. After that, are they going to pay the $10? I don't think so. But once they do get on and they find out, they have to log on, and they have a source of finding out who it was that broke into your house, and they can go for them. It works. I'm in, I am in favor of uh, Mark Stewart's plan of having everybody's house on the internet. And Mark, if you want to take pictures of the front, back, whatever my house, please come up. 
what about the criminal element that use our credit card numbers and everything every day from the government institution? Don't tell me the criminal minded don't get on the internet. It's okay. They, but, yeah. Folks, folks, there's a podium. Mr. Nunez, would you like to speak? My name is Mike Nunez, N-U-N-E-Z, Penfield Township. I'm against to have my home showing on the internet. I was a police officer for 31 years in Lorraine. I had no problem finding the addresses. If I did, it was because the numbers were not placed, the street signs were missing. I think it'd be very valuable for the police, sheriff's department, and emergency uh, services only to them. That's all I can say. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Okay. I guess we have one more. One more. Zane Dela, D O E H L A. I'm from Sheffield Village. I don't know if all of you are aware. The number one nonviolent crime in this country is identity theft. This is just an extension and an open open can of worms for all those kinds of people to work against us. That's all I have to say. Thank you for coming. Okay, I'd like to close. I'll take one more question, and, and I think our time is limiting us here. Um, my name is Elizabeth Hall, and I'm from Avon Lake. Um, I uh, read about this in the Lorraine Journal. I didn't see it in our press until I asked uh, Mayor Anderson to give them a call because they didn't... Uh, respond to my request that they make a note of this uh, um, project. <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, my neighbor and I have been going around our community and asking everyone if they know about this project. And I would say 10 out of 11 have no idea, had no idea, do not know about it. And so we have advised probably 100 people. <clears throat> And the first question they ask us is, why? Why is my house going on the internet? And we have to respond, we don't know. We have no idea why your house is going on the internet. We can only assume that it does benefit the people in business, the realtors, <clears throat> the um, um, insurers, and other people who want to know um, your business. So as far as we are concerned, we don't want our pictures of our homes on the uh, internet, and I appreciate the option of writing you a letter to that effect, which we will do. <coughs> but I notice that <coughs> the people, there are some people who are exempt. They are peace officers and residents in the Federal Witness Protection Program. Now, if the, there are some classifications that are exempt, then that would imply there is a little bit of danger in this program. And consequently, some of us might feel we might have enemies. Maybe somebody will come gunning for us, even though we're not police officers. But that's just one of the elements. Personally, we feel it is a violation of our rights as homeowners. Uh, it used to be our home was our castle. It's, it looks as if it has just been bridged, our homes. And um, as far as I'm concerned, when a van stays out on the street and takes a, a picture of your home, the lens of his camera is just as, just as uh, valid as if someone crosses over into your yard. They are violating your space. Even though they are out in the street, their camera is violating your individual property. And so I don't, I'm not sure that this is legal. I, I would have to say it probably hasn't been tested yet. But if, if uh, some of us are so against it and we do find ourselves on the Internet, I can assure you it will be tested in a state, in a court of law. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Again, I, you know, Mark Stewart did not have to come here. He did this on his own. And I'd like to thank Mark Stewart for coming in for taking the heat because I know this has been rough for you. I do appreciate coming to our forum to explain this in detail. Thank you. Okay. Sir, we'll have another time when people can speak after we're done with the agenda, but I'd like to clear the agenda a little bit. We have. We're back to the commissioner's report. Okay. 
I think I'll just report on a couple things here and hold the rest for the next meeting since we're so far into the time here. But anyway, I'll, I wanted to let everyone know that our bond rating was increased for the sewer issue for that bond, and I want to really commend our, our budget department and Mr. Cordes for all the work that they've done. Because our bond rating was, um, what was it, John? A1, A1, and we're now at triple A, A triple which A is A the A highest A that we can ever get. From Moody's investors, that's correct. Correct. So thank you thank very, you very much, much, and we're very proud of them. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll hold up on the rest until the next meeting. Five, five, no report. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Old business? No I'm report. Yeah. None. New business? None. Board correspondence? Moved away. Discuss second. Discussion? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Basie? Aye. Okay. Now, we're on public comment. If anyone is here that would like to offer any comments or has any questions for the board, Please approach the podium. I'm going to try to be as short as possible, and I get thrown off uh, really easy. Number one question is why, this is Lorraine County, why is Elyria residents able to have type A child care uh, provider's license in the city of Elyria, but in Lorraine, the city of Lorraine, in order to have type A, you have to be, it can't be a residential area, it has to be zone commercial. I'm going, to, I'm going to wing this on behalf of the board, but I believe it's a local mis municipality. Okay. Okay. So I think that, you have to discuss each municipality. Right. Their own that would probably be dre uh, best addressed by city council uh, or the mayor's office, each one of the cities. Uh, Ron, you may. That's right. Okay. I'm, I'm looking to my community local. development director. Okay. 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 Um, number two. I've been saying this for a long time that people of color are not represented in uh, the workforce and supervisory positions. Now the study is out and what are we going to do to make sure that it's more equal opportunity? Uh, that's what we stand on. It's supposed to be that we're all equal. But if you look around in Lorraine County, my children surely can't see themselves represented in different uh, workplaces. And I want to know now that the um, survey is out and the documentation is there, are we going to move forward to addressing this issue? Because it's been a problem for a long time in Lorraine County. In Lorraine County, I grew up and was born in Lorraine County, and I brought my children back here because I know that it's a melting pot and we all have to be represented, not just who know who. That's how jobs have been uh, given out throughout Lorraine County is who you know, not especially human services, not right of right or your uh, education level. So are we going to really take action and look into this and make it more fair? I can only speak for the departments under the commissioners, but I believe that we have been doing this, and you, you are seeing more and more uh, supervision, uh, uh, African Americans in supervision p positions. I can't speak for other areas of the county because we have no other authority over those. But if you're addressing this board and, and looking for answers here in the county, we can only uh, speak for our own department. I believe with the, there will be some summits coming up too pretty, to discuss the uh, issues that were in the report that we read about, I think it was two days ago. So. Well, I, I, and I, I may, may not need pointing out, sometimes I'm guilty of pointing out the obvious, but that, those, that data that was uh, made available, which was, was quite enlightening and, and, and uh, a lot of time and effort went into it, uh, did not point to Lorraine County government, it pointed to Lorraine County as a whole. Right. Uh, that included your private sector, your nonprofit sector, and I'm sure it included your government sector. Uh, so that's because there's, there's some inconsistencies in the data, does not necessarily uh, pinpoint that there's inconsistencies with the, the way this board's hiring practice and representation is uh, as a whole. That data was spaced out over the entire county. We can't not be in denial either. We can't, you know, we have to take it for what it is, look at it just like they said in the paper, and address it. You know, we cannot keep on acting like it's not there. We can't keep looking at the thing with rose-colored glasses. Like I said, my children and anybody else can go into institutions all over Lorain County and see it's just not right. But I'll move on from that. But I, all I'm saying is now that the information is out there, let's not continue to cover it up. Let's really go forth with an effort to change the community for the betterment of the whole community. 
this next ex issue is very touching my heart, so I'm going to basically read because I get thrown off. On September the 5th, 1995, I resigned from the juvenile court system. I worked at Hazel Weber and I worked at the detention home. Uh, what happened the other day was bound to happen and more is bound to happen. I don't care what Dale Kaminsky say. I don't care what Stavonicek say. I resigned on that day because I went to Tim Glaslow. I went to Ken Kakuk. I went to everyone. I went to Lori Simon and I told him that there was being racism played against the children. Children were being kicked and spit on and called niggers and different things within the juvenile system. And I do not care if those children are inmates and they are wrong. As adults, we are still professional and we have a right to play and a role to play in a professional manner. There's some things happening at the juvenile detention center and with juvenile workers that should not be happening. And as long as that is allowed to go on, our youth are getting more violent every day. The parents are losing control. The schools are losing control. Society has lost control. This is my life. And when I resigned, I said, I will work with these kids for free before I sit back and allow children to be mistreated. We can provoke children to anger. We can provoke children to violence. I do not want to see not one staff person killed or injured. I do not want to see one innocent child that is there serving his time for his crime to be hurt or harmed because somebody has provoked another child. And they feel like when you're in fear, you do anything you can to, to negate that fear. And the situation was a blessing. They did not find the keys to the staff person's car. They could have went out there. We don't know if they know how to drive or not and killed a totally innocent family. We need to, the commissioner's office need, and Judge Lily and them need to take a very serious look. And what I'm saying is don't go in there with blinders on, but take a very serious look at how our juvenile system is being ran and is it effective and efficient enough to save lives because this is just the beginning. Something is going to happen. You can ignore the messenger if you want to, but don't ignore the message and the warning signs are there. We have a potential problem. Don't look at Columbine. Don't look at Massachusetts. Look at Lorain County. We have issues and we have children that are so angry. And I was a juvenile delinquent and I can identify them. And our children are getting more and more angry as the day goes by. Nobody's listening. Nobody's giving enough attention. And some of them, I don't care how good the school is. I don't care how good the parent is. Some of them have chose to live this lifestyle. And we as adults are to combat it as best we can. And when they get into the system, that's no time to provoke them because they already in fear. They don't know if they're getting ready to get sent to TICO or where. So we need to be very, very, very cautious of what's going on. And we need to come up with a solution and a plan. And I'm not pointing the finger at any one person or saying any one thing. I'm saying we see there's a problem, there's a warning sign. Now let's deal with it the best we can. Thank you. Sir. Hi, uh, my name is Paul Keebler and I, I represent the Elyria Hospitality House. Uh, I got a call from uh, Joe Rhodes indicating to come down and just kind of present what we do, that there was some uh, reason that the uh, county commissioners and the county administration just were, was concerned, not concerned, but wanted to know what we're doing. And well, I think aware. I asked Joe to call you to come in just to explain and, and so that you can take advantage of the media Fine. to let the public know of your needs. I understand that, uh, Joe, that there are some needs there for food and, and toys for Christmas. Yeah, the, uh, the hospitality house has been in, in business, so to speak, for the, almost 14 years. It, started as a, uh, a need out of the downtown area. Many of the churches downtown had people coming to the doors looking for food and clothing. So they said we should have maybe one place, not necessarily the only place, but a, a place to, to send people. So we've been offering those kinds of assistance, food and clothing. The, the, uh, the concern of toys that sometimes uh, toys do come in, that, that's a need, uh, but there are many organizations that are providing toys. That may be not our biggest issue. Uh, it, this gives us the opportunity, though, to, to present that we're you know, just right around the corner here from, from the, the commission's office. And uh, some of the things that uh, the real needs we have has become better known, which we really appreciate the opportunity to come forward and, and present that we are in existence. We need daily volunteers. 
Uh, we're looking for new board members as well. And we, we take financial donations as well. So uh, again, I appreciate the opportunity to come up here. If there's any particular questions people have, I'd be glad to ask, answer them at this time. Uh, and again, I thank you for the opportunity to use the media for uh, some... Uh, uh, if you'd like, you can give your address. And, and it's right across the street right, from the parking de deck of the administration building. Yes, we're at uh, 234 uh, 3rd Street here. It's the, uh, the house that was previously part of the Bittner de Carlo Funeral Home. Uh, it's between... It's owned by St. Mary's Church but the organization is separate from St. Mary's. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to address the board? I almost forgot, but uh, during the commissioner's report, I did ask Karen Plebum to come up here. She heard something on TV in regards to uh, the networks, the internet on TV, or the internet on the computers, and how parents should be uh, aware that children can get into problems with this. Karen, explain a little bit. Okay. Uh, the name is Karen Plevin, T-L-E-B-A-N. I'm the Commissioner's Computer Systems Manager. Um, Channel 5 is conducting a town hall program uh, covering the dangers on the internet with children. Um, I'm encouraging all parents to watch this program. It's going to be on at uh, 8 o'clock tonight on Channel 5. Um, they're going to give examples of how children can get into trouble, and and it's something we should really look into. I know I'm from the generation where we taught our kids don't talk to strangers when you're walking down the street, or you know don't answer the door to strangers. Well, now we've got the internet to deal with, and it's amazing on what kind of information that these uh, these bad people can get from our children, and and the trouble that they can get into. So it's channel at 8 o'clock tonight. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Okay, anyone else that would like to address the board? So we're going to move into executive session? Yes. Okay. Second that. Mr. Moore. Oh, hi. Ms. Basie. Hi. 